Hello and welcome to the Beefy Tech channel. Today's video is going to be an AMD settings video. And by AMD settings video, I mean AMD adrenaline settings video. Because I've been tinkering with settings quite a lot ever since I got my 6950 XT. And I found out some good settings that might help you guys out to get overall a better experience on AMD stuff. I do have to preface that I have been getting quite a couple of driver crashes and I've had to reinstall the driver about three times to, well, get it to stop crashing every now and then, but now it's been working fine for about a week, so I'm happy with that much, but I just thought I'd let you guys know. Anyway, first things first, let's start with the most important part of the settings video, and that is the GPU settings video. Mind you, this is dependent and per graphics card, it will not apply to you exactly what I have, especially when it comes to the fan curve or the overclock, but I can give you a rough estimate of what you should be able to do with your own graphics card. So first things first, make sure that the GPU tuning is enabled and you have to have uh, manual tuning enabled too with advanced control turned on. Without the advanced control turned on, you get just some percentage sliders, which are not very helpful. Anyway, first things first, you're going to want to go here and set your megahertz slightly above your boost clock on the highest frequency and 100 under your highest frequency for that. Let's say you have a boost clock of 2500, you can attempt to set it to 2600 and then you're lower to 2500. I have mine set to 2700 on the to uh, top frequency and 2600 on the bottom one because my graphics card was boosting to around 2640-ish at best from what I've seen and holding like 2560. So I thought I'd do a slight undervolt and do a slight overclock using that. But I also have power tuning set to enabled and my power limit up 20%. This helps get these boost frequencies very stable. For the fan curve, I have a reference model 6950XT. So as you can see, it's an extremely aggressive fan curve that goes near to full tilt as my graphics card gets quite hot under load. Anyway, moving to the next part. All right, now I would like to go over the metrics section of the AMD Adrenaline settings. This one is quite easy to determine. It just helps you check on all of your hardware. One thing I do want to mention yet again, the utilization on the CPU is not correct. And uh, from what I can see, that's been happening on quite a lot of programs lately, especially for Ryzen CPUs. And I'm not entirely sure why that is, but I did want to mention that the utilization specifically isn't showing correctly. And if you do want to see correct utilization, you might want to consider using hardware info or just task manager everything else works flawlessly. This is useful because you can now check your clock speeds if you're doing an overclock, voltage, obviously if you have a 5800X3D, voltage is not that much of an option, but it also lets you see power consumption and all of that stuff. Anyway, over here, you can uh, choose exactly what you want to be displayed and what you want to be taken, uh, kept into account. And the more things you have turned on, like me that I have everything turned on, the more of a performance hit you're taking to the CPU um, because it has to essentially keep track of all of the extra stuff. So the more things you turn off, the better the performance while logging all of the information. But anyway, I like to keep mine at sampling interval of one second, because if you do 0.5, it's going to be even more of a performance hit. But then if you do two seconds, it's going to be too slow for keeping track of everything. Another important part is going to be the overlay. Over here, you have the show metrics overlay, which if you enable, will bring up this menu that allows you to keep track of every single performance meter within a game. Right here you have a, a sliders to allow you to move things around and make this larger, smaller, depending on what you need. Obviously making it much larger than 100 or 150 isn't ideal. Moving on to the next and one of the most important parts. Now, you might be wondering, what would be one of the most important things? And as you can see by the screen that's currently up, it is the hotkeys. And you might be asking yourself, why are hotkeys so important? Well, it's because they allow to do absolutely everything without having to actually access the AMD menu. It's very convenient, very helpful. If you want to toggle performance logging, all you have to do is go do Control Shift L like that. And boom shakalaka, the performance logging has begun. And now you do Control Shift L and you stop performance logging. If you want the performance overlay to also show the logging, obviously, you do Control shift o and it appears. Obviously, the performance logging just means it's going to save the exact performance of the time frame where you were recording the logging, and it'll save it on a folder for you to have. The performance overlay 
shows it on the top right corner and you can do this for virtually anything. I started this recording using one of these shortcuts so I highly recommend you go to the hotkeys section and you check out all these hotkeys because they're extremely helpful to make the whole AMD experience far more enjoyable. Not only that, I want to move on to the record and stream section which thanks to the hotkeys is actually quite convenient. As you can see right now I'm recording display one with my Aorus monitor and uh, have the microphone set to 75%. With the hotkeys, I am able to stop this recording, disable my microphone and do everything just on the go without anybody ever knowing. It's super convenient. Anyway, let's move over to advanced settings for recording. Now, I have enabled record desktop as I have to record the desktop for this video and I recommend you guys turn this on too. And I also have the show indicator for recording turned on. Anyway, for the best recording settings, what I have found to be is the video bitrate set to around 70,000. You can set it higher if you like to for higher quality or lower if you don't need to record a YouTube video and you just want some basic level recording, you can do like 30,000. And that would just be a 30, 70 or 90, depending on what you need. For the audio bitrate, I just have it set to the absolute highest. I'm fully aware it's not necessary for it to be set to the absolute highest, but I like to have it like that. For the video encoding type, I have AVC and then enhanced filtering turned on. The reason you want enhanced filtering is because it makes AVC encoding easily the best of the two options, which is HEVC and AVC. Normally HEVC is better than AVC, but with enhanced filtering, AVC is better than HEVC. So if you want the best uh, recording, AVC with enhanced filtering is your solution. One important thing I want to mention too, the microphone level being set to 75 is ideal as by default, the audio quality comes out very quiet <laughs> uh, on the end of whatever recording software or whatever software you're using to edit your video. So 75 or more is recommended. Oh, and very important, make sure you have record microphone turned on. One more thing, you want to make sure you have the media save location to somewhere memorable so you can exit quite easily. And your audio, audio capture device by default will go to whatever is desktop default, but you can change it from here to whatever audio device you have plugged in. Anyway, we are on to the display section in the settings menu. So over here, you have your AMD FreeSync, which if you do have a monitor that supports it, you could have it on or off. I generally recommend though, keeping AMD FreeSync off. I've seen a lot of games that have issues with AMD FreeSync in specific. And if you're getting enough frame rate, AMD FreeSync shouldn't be necessary anyway. This is only a if you're getting very low frame rate type of beat. Anyway, for virtual super resolution, you want to keep this off. It is not going to be helpful in most situations. All of these three right here are not important and uh, should be ignored anyway. For color depth, it depends on what monitor you have. If you have a really fancy monitor over here, you would be able to select your color depth. Mine is an 8-bit, 8... -bit, uh, eight uh, color depth monitor, so I'm just going to leave it as what it is. Pixel format doesn't matter, and display color enhancement you can actually use if you'd like, but it does change the colors quite awkwardly, so uh, I personally keep it off. One important thing you can use for Call of Duty, though, is custom color. This might actually allow you to turn up the brightness, hue, contracts, and saturation to make your game easier to... well, to make characters in the game easier to see. Now this is extremely monitor dependent and uh, I could tweak all these things however and it would make no difference to you guys because you wouldn't be able to see as your monitor would have different settings than mine anyway. But I recommend this if you're struggling to see in Call of Duty and you can uh, tweak it, play around with it and see what works best for you. All right, and for the final part of the settings video, we've got the preferences. These are pretty straightforward. Leave everything on that is on and turn off advertisement and toast notifications. If you have an extremely low end PC, I could recommend turning off animation and effects, but I'll be honest with you, it makes nearly no difference as I've tried it on a crappier PC and it's impossible to notice any differences. But anyway, if you guys have any other questions and would like to know more about the AMD Adrenal software or would like me to address something more specific that I haven't gone over, like the VR section of this, which I don't even have installed, let me know in the comments section below and I'll make sure to make a video on it. Thank you for watching today's video. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content and I'll see you next time.